Being in cash could cost you, says BlackRock. Of course, BlackRock. You know, they're they're just looking here. They're just looking out for us, dude. You know, lucky Larry Fink and the clowns that run that show. They're just they're here for us. They don't. They just want the best for middle class Americans. That's really what they want. They're not part of the evil, evil cabal. So BlackRock says they're very worried about you. You know for sure they are worried about you. So check this out. Jill sent this to me. And I just laughed at this. This is so freaking pedestrian. It's even worse. It's infantile. Infantile. I'm literally embarrassed that BlackRock is this stupid. And yet they're, they're the ones. They're not in charge, mind you. Larry Fink is just, George Soros, Larry Fink, you know, freaking uh, Ken Griffin, whatever the guy who's donating to DeSantis was like from Citadel. These guys aren't in charge. You know what I'm saying? They're just mouthpieces of the people who are above them. I don't know who the people are above them, but these guys aren't in charge. But the fact that BlackRock is this idiotic and yet they still have a power in our society, it just shows you how corrupt our society is. It's just, it's not just evil. It's stupid. It's stupid and evil, frankly, that these idiots are running things. It's, oh, look, you're not going to, your vote isn't going to change this, man. I'm sorry. Just don't forget how did BlackRock get so big to begin with? Oh, because George W. Bush hired them for the great financial crisis. So my vote mattered. I thought it did. I thought it did. I was heavy into George Bush in 2004. I thought for sure if we didn't get George Bush in there, things would go to bad to worse. And uh, and I was uh, and I was right. If we if we didn't get George Bush in there, things would go to bad to worse. Unfortunately, with George Bush in there, it went from bad to worse. So it didn't matter. Anyway, point being. So here's their argument. Look, money market funds have had a lot of money coming in in the last uh, 12 months. Four times of well, year to date, four times the flow of incoming assets and bond funds. However, what you would don't understand, you idiot, you uh, idiot investor, is that even with the elevated yields, domestic money market performance has generally lagged significantly compared to bond funds and equities. Huh. Oh my goodness, your clients may be missing out. Fear of missing out. You don't want to miss out, do you? And BlackRock is here. And they don't have any incentive in this, you know, to have you sit in cash. They, you know, they don't, they just, they, look, you can be in cash. BlackRock doesn't care, but they're just looking out for you. So here are the idiots at BlackRock say, look, the quarter 1 1 2023 to 3 31 2023, money markets only made 1%. Oh my goodness. Where core, core bonds made 3%. Hmm. And stocks made 7.5%. You missed out on being in bonds, uh, being in cash instead of money market. Uh, being in cash instead of stocks or bonds. All right, so this, uh, do you not, I hope you get, all right, yeah, we made one, one uh, percent. Why do we make one percent? That's the quarter, by the way. Well, pretty simple. Here's our Fed funds rate. All right, so a lot of people look at a 12 month rate. For, let's, let's show this something too. Here's a Fidelity uh, government money market, SPACs, SPACs, and so far they made 1.87 percent. We're at border, getting close to the end of the second quarter. Hmm. That would make sense, would it? Now, we'll check this out. For the 52 weeks, they've only up 2.34. They only made 2.34. How could that possibly be? They're only making 2.34. And for three years, they only made 0.78. Well, because of Fed funds rate, man. The Fed funds rate was, I mean, look at this. This is going back uh, to 2022. Let's make it go back to oh, 2000, well, right there. Blink, watch this. The Fed funds rate was, was three base, seven basis points, eight basis points. From 2020 to 2022, you didn't make any money in the, in the short term because the Fed funds rate was so low. So now what happens is we go from Fed, we got from point, we go eight basis points to 20 basis points to 30 basis points to 1.21. So we're going up the, the calendar here, the ladder here, but still, even at the end of July of 2022, that, you know, nine, 11 months ago, the Fed funds rate is still in 1.68. So let's just say you dropped a uh, million dollars in the Fed funds rate, all right? So for one month, you got an annualized yield of 1.68. For another, the next month, you got an annualized yield of 2.33, all right? And again, that's, for a whole, if, that's if you kept the thing at 1.68 for the entirety of those 12 months, but you didn't. The next month, you got 2.33. The next month, you got 2.566. So the point being is you don't, you don't just get all this right here, the current rate, in one fell swoop, it took 12 months to get where we are. And again, one month you got less, I mean, literally a year ago today, you were getting, uh, was it three, was it June of 2022 in the Fed funds rate? It was uh, June of 2022, you were getting 1.21. So if you divide the last 12 months into 12 different slithers, 
for that's 8.33% each. So for 8.33% of the time, you only got 1.21. For another 8.33%, you got 1.68. For another, you got 2.33. So what that simply means is that's why our 12-month rate of return on this is only 2. Point, uh, what is it here? Uh, 2.34 because we didn't get 4.75 for the entirety 12 months. We, we got an average of 2.34 because the Fed funds rate was going up. And now the Fed funds rate is right here. Look at this. 5.06. Fidelity money market is paying 4.75. Right? Now, BlackRock, the idiots, they say, look, you only made uh 1%, yeah, because we had an, an annualized yield of 4% back then, BlackRock. Four divided by, uh, is, so that means if you have four quarters in a year, that means 1% each and every quarter. We got 1% in the Q1, 1% Q2, 1% Q3, 1% Q4. And that's how that works. So BlackRock saying, look, the stocks did 7.5, where bonds, or the money market only did one. And ironically, let's go back to Fidelity. So far at year to date, we're at 1.87. So by the end of this quarter, there'll probably be a little bit north of 2% year to date. Why? Because the Fed funds rate has been growing. All right, so it's just, it's, it's mind boggling how idiotic that BlackRock is saying this. And even it's even worse here too. So reassess your client holdings to cash because you missed out on this right here. And we're going to talk about that here in just a second. On top of that, we're going to go down here and then they have this idiotic, cash can be a, a drag. What, they're saying drag is negative? How dare you, BlackRock? How dare you say drag in the negative light? You should be freaking canceled off Twitter, misgendered. Drag, we're supposed to celebrate brave and beautiful and drags. And we should be in front of celebrating that in front of kindergartners too. So how dare BlackRock? How dare they? Cash can be a drag as if drag's a negative thing. You so it should be, cash can be normal when rate hikes ends. That normal being the negative thing here. That's what it'd be. The connotation of drag being negative really bothers me. Should say cash can be a normal when rate hikes ends, and normal would be negative for sure. So again, so what does that inherently mean? Cash can be a drag when rate hikes end. Rate hikes haven't ended yet, BlackRock. So inherently, if cash can be a drag when rate hike ends, that would imply that cash can be a benefit when rate hikes are going. Uh, you can't even get your story straight, idiots. All right, but let's check this out. Here's here's Lucky Larry. Uh, I want to show you this one thing that uh, my man, I think it was Thomas, sent to me. We're going to talk about Lucky Larry here. Late stage legal plunder is by bad catitude. Now, my drawback with bad catitude is he thinks that we have some kind of control on the uh, society, and, like our boycotts are targeting. Like it's it's fun to watch. I love seeing some of these guys, you know, freaking you know eat dirt. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter, dude. You think BlackRock, I like BlackRock, but you think these guys at Target, uh, Anheuser Busch didn't know what they're doing? Ford, of course they know what they're doing. I just laugh or laugh. I mean, we're being played as if, oh my goodness, we're, we're making a difference. Remember, they just want you in the realm. They want you. They give, they take, they take, they give a little bit to keep you occupied with the realm of the evil insanity. I'm telling you, man, they'll do anything to keep you focused on the realm of insanity, to keep you, keep you away from your spiritual journey. It's 100%. I completely, I've come to this conclusion now. And I just emailed Jill, actually, who sent me this article on BlackRock about this because she's, you know, a big Trump guy. So, look, I, I think it's all fake. It doesn't matter. You know, they want us to be involved, wasting our time thinking that we can make a difference in that realm of if we just boycott Target, if we just boycott. And you should. I like it. I'm not going to Target. I don't care. I like, but you got to mock these people. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. If you think that Ford didn't know what they're doing, Major League Baseball didn't know what they're doing, dude, they're pushing, they're pushing and pushing to draw you back in. It's like when they put Elon Musk in front of Twitter. You think they did it to be free speech? No, they want to draw people back in. I, I just, I don't know how people don't see this. They don't care. They just want you occupied on idiotic stuff as opposed to pursuing your spiritual journey with God. I truly believe this. And the way they do this to give you just enough, enough of a carrot to draw you back in. Say, see, we're so successful at Target and with uh, Anheuser Bush, whatever the hell it is, that we can do this even more in Walmart. It's great. And you're like, yeah, okay. They don't care. They don't care. Look at, think about it. Uh, 10, 10, 15 years ago, both Biden and Sniffy Joe said a marriage is between a man and a woman. Unequivocally, they did. All right. Now we got freaking Ted Cruz out there saying, we got to go after Uganda basically because of their anti-whatever-it-is law, 57 flavors law. Like, who cares about Uganda? 
That's how much the realm has shifted in the last 10 to 15 years. They're always going to give you a little bit of cake to get you on that high sugar high, the dopamine crush, the rush that says you're making a difference. When you're not, it doesn't matter. They control it all. You got to get back to your own personal jihad to fight those demons, to get rid of the alcohol, the pornography, the gambling, the spending, all that stuff, and to get back on your personal journey with God. God, look, this is me too. I'm talking to myself. But this is what they do. They throw these little tidbits to make you think you're making a difference when you're just not. All right, let's keep going. So here's Lucky Larry. Uh, again, when the corporations are advertising your movement, you aren't the resistance. Okay, we know who, look, we know there's things you can't say. And those are the people and groups who are in charge. Just We know there are groups of things you can't say about people. And those are the people in charge. That's all there is to it. So if the corporation is saying, look, they, they just want you involved. That's what they want. They want you wasting your time involvement. So here's Lucky Larry uh, right here. Uh, Black, so BlackRock increases ownership of Fox Corp uh, in February to over 15%. They're now the largest one, number one largest stakeholder and hold all the cards. And then they turn around and fire Tucker at the same point. As if Tucker, uh, oh, come on. <laughs> look, BlackRock took ownership of... Uh, they took ownership of Fox so they could fire Tucker Carlson. Oh, come on. Come on, man. You think they needed to take 15% to get Tucker fired? You think 12% or 10% was enough to get Tucker fired? Come on. You think Tucker Carlson, he must be doing something so far over the thing that they had to get rid of him. Do you really think so? No. Come on. It's too, it's too obvious. Anyway, here's Lucky Larry. Here's his right here. I'm not going to play it. Fink says the quiet part out loud. Behaviors are going to have to change, says Lucky Larry. You have to force behavior. At BlackRock, we are forcing behavior. All right. So, look, the guy's a scumbag. What I'm saying. So, and if you listen to anything BlackRock says, you're a fool. I don't know what to tell you, man. I mean, who cares what BlackRock says? The guy's a scumbag. No two ways around it. They're forcing behavior by, look, they're forcing behavior by taking ownership of Fox and firing Tucker. Oh, my goodness. But look, our, we're doing great. We're winning the battle with our target and our anti-woke stuff. I'm not saying be pro-woke. I'm just saying get off the freaking the circle, that never-ending circle if, if we just vote harder. I'm telling you. All right, so let's keep going. I want to show you something else here, too. Here's cash versus the uh, VTI, the total stock index. We see cash from January 2022 start at 10000 bucks. It's now worth... Uh, 10,382. We made almost 4% over the course of that year. And this is just a proxy. It's not, there's no cash. Uh, they don't let you use a specific money market in here. Just got to use cash. But either way, we made money, man. We made almost 3.8% over the course of 12 months, uh, from January, 2022, not 12 months, that'd be 18 months or so until May of th uh, 2023. That works for me. Oh, what's VTI done? Oh, VTI is down 13%, 13%. All right, so VTI loss was all the way down here at the end of, they were down 25% by September. Now they've gone from 7,500 bucks to 8,700 bucks. They made 12,000 over 7,500. They've made 16% from October low or September low. That's great, but we're still in the red relative to where we started in a year and a half ago. So BlackRock says, you're, you're missing out here. <laughs> It's just so freaking dumb, man. I, I thought we weren't supposed to use short-term stuff to identify opportunities in the markets there, guys. Uh, it's even worse, though. So BlackRock says, look, you're missing out on that 7.5% uh, bump. Uh, yeah, but you know what we didn't miss out on? We didn't miss out on this right here. So the question is, we're up 16%. Now, does that mean, so here's, look at that. Oh, that's a dead cap bounce, right? There's, I mean, another dead cap bounce. You can see the little fluctuations and we're kind of flattened off over since March here. So we're at 8,400. So we had a big run from uh, January. We're at 8,000 and then we ran to uh, 8,600 bucks. And now we're still from basically the end of January till today to May, we're at 8,700 bucks. We haven't really made any money over the last uh, January, February, March, April, May. In four months, we haven't really made much money. Now we have had a couple good days so far in June. But either way, the, a lot of this, this right here has already been booked, has already been banked at the markets. I don't know if it'll keep going. I don't know. I, no one knows. What I'm just trying to say is we look at these short-term things. You say, oh, my goodness, what is Bitcoin? Let's take a look at what Bitcoin has done. Let's take a look. Bitcoin from December 20. It was at uh, Bitcoin market price, 3500 bucks, and now it's at 
5,800 bucks. So Bitcoin is up 58 minus 35 divided by 35. Bitcoin is up 65% lucky, Larry. So shouldn't we then be looking at Bitcoin? Because our, our, our Bitcoin is way up over stocks. So if I'm sitting in stocks, what am I missing out on by being in Bitcoin? That little thing's so stupid. And it's even worse. This is how idiotic that BlackRock is. So notice they'll say U.S. stocks 7.5. Right there, they say money market funds 1%. You see where it says that? U.S. stocks right there, 7.5. Money market is 1%. What, what, oh, U.S. stocks, 1.7. U.S. stocks, 2.3. U.S. stocks, 3. We can't even make up your mind what U.S. stocks are. Of course, I mean, they, they're meant to say this is core bonds right there. That's minus bonds. That's uh, short-term bonds. they just a typo. This is how insane it is. These are the people in charge of the world. Uh, come on, man. It's all fake. It just really is. And I, uh, I'm, I'm surprised. I'm not surprised. You just got to watch the fear of missing out, dude. You, you got to watch the FOMO. Because it, you're like, man, I, I, look, I get it. When the market kicked ass on Friday, I was like, man, I wish I had all my money in the markets. But I know I don't. And I know I don't for a reason. I, I can't afford the downside risk. I have a third of my money in the markets, a little bit more. But I just can't afford it. And if you're comfortable with 5% a year, that's what you're getting on the money market right now. Doesn't mean you're always going to get that. But you got to look at a gauge. What am I comfortable getting? Five. All right. That means if the stocks go 12, remember you said you were comfortable getting five. You said that. You said that. You said to me, you said to yourself, you said to your wife. I don't care. If you're comfortable getting five, don't turn around and say, well, the stocks are giving us 12. Thus, I need to be in the markets. Why? If you already said I'm comfortable with five, you're getting five of the money markets right now. Don't look a gift horse in the mouth. All right, love your thoughts. We'll see you.